Oh, girl, shalom, shalom. Thought she was late. I was one minute late this morning. All right, beautiful people. Happy Thursday. It is November the 17th, 2022. Day 265 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. And of the four year consecutive, they count. Day 1,284. Today, we're picking back up in the Waspy Book of Sathanti, Son of Jehovah. Chapter 18, or if you have the electronic version, it's chapter XV, I, 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 and that begins on page 30. And then when we're done here, we're going to hop back over to the field guide to the spirit world. This book is so good. And we're going to pick up in chapter four, which is entitled Soul Murder, and it begins on page 79. Elijah, peace and blessings. Anita, greetings. Fritz, grand rising. Yes, all praises to the Father. It's going to be a beautiful day, Apple Girl. Tabitha, shalom. Remember, y'all, Keon Cooper is Tabitha. She's using her son's YouTube account. Uh, volume, you can't hear me? Fritz said volume. I know I double checked my end. Mine says I'm all the way up. Can y'all hear me? YouTube, can y'all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Fritz, check your, somebody say Fritz, check your, check your volume. You can hear. Okay. All right. Fritz, that might be your volume. I don't know. Hold on, let me see. Oh, you good? Okay. I was, I was just about to say Fritz, check your volume. Okay. She broke all praises to the creator. Miss Hannah. Shalom. Shalom. Auntie, Belinda Brown, Grand Rising, Auntie. Okay, y'all, and everybody else here hanging out in the background. Top of the morning to you. Facebook, shalom, shalom. All right, y'all, let's get right to it. My Beam Ali, Love and Light, Global Purpose, Grand Rising, Mom, shalom, shalom. All right, y'all, page 30 in Owaspi, chapter 18. Jehovah spake in the Ark of Owaspi. In the Orion field of Hanshi in the Ethereum heaven, Jehovah said, the time of the earth is at hand. The deliverance of her firstborn will soon, hold on. The deliverance of her firstborn will fall at your doors. Come forth, O my sons and daughters. Receive ye them from my hand. Onzi, you know what? I had a problem with this, this word the first time. I was saying onesie. Onzi, what is it? My, um. Pronunciation scholars. Is it Onzi? Is it Onzi? I don't know. Levon Blessings. I ain't I ain't watch it yet. She brew hide and seek. I know um um the name right on the tip of my tongue. We was talking yesterday too. But anyway, yeah. Uh yeah, Jamil, thank you. Yeah, I didn't get a chance. Jamil recommended that. Um, she said, well, she didn't recommend. She said, now she got to go back and see that. But I haven't seen it yet. It's on my list, though. I'll probably watch it by the time the week is out. All right, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to just say Onzi, right? Just in case don't nobody know how to pronounce it, I'm going to say Onzi. Verse 2, chapter 18, page 30. Onzi, high aspiring goddess of Hanshi, and the thousand counselors gathered in a host of five million souls, emancipated, and to them the dignified Onzi spake, saying, Unlike all harvests heretofore delivered to us from other corporal worlds, Jehovah sendeth us the firstborn of the earth. Let us rejoice and glorify him. O my beloved, send forth the boundaries of Hanshi and proclaim the hosts of earth upraised. Provide them with mansions and quarters, ye that remain at home, and ye that volunteer to go to the earth to receive them, come quickly. Onzi said, swift messengers have just come to me from the Ark of Juan. It's easy I will be there. She, it was who bestowed Jehovah's crown on the first God of the corporal earth. Her host, a million strong, go by way of the Tevias and pray we meet them in Oweah. And thou, Wistal, shall sit on my throne. I will go to the earth and receive the 30 million newborn, the glorious gift of Jehovah. Supreme bright other shalom. Finally, you get to catch it on time. Okay, set apart. Hey, girl. Hey, Nene, shalom, sis. 
Onzi said, the young virgin earth hath given birth. Oh, the joy of the firstborn. I will take with me a host of singers, a million strong. Their voices shall have power and sweetness to win the love and adoration of all the 30 million. The glory of Jehovah's works shall shine so brilliantly upon them that all past trials shall be forgotten. Hasten, O ye gods and goddesses, let down the curtains of fire. Here begins the play of Jehovah in the management of a new world. we in chapter 18, page 30 of Owaspi, verse 6. Now gathered together, men and women, long raised up in the emancipated heavens, whose wills were potent over Aji and Nebula, and swift in appropriating what Jehovah had fashioned in the firmament. And they built the ship, the ship the size of which was equal to the width of Horrid, and filled it within with angels of the rank of gods and goddesses, many of whom had been brought forth into life before the earth was created, and whose native corporal worlds had gone out of existence. And they let down the curtains from the ship, and the curtains were like flames of fire, and they reached downward, equal to the breadth of the earth. These gods and goddesses were as a unit in will, and potent and swift workmen, and the ship was laden and on her course through the vault of heaven. Past the Aegean fields of Shawang, she rode swiftly. Soon the hosts of the much-loved Etesii were seen in a smaller craft, highly polished and swift, making way for Oel. Up goeth the shout of joy from millions of throats, then a song of delight. Heaven is joyful in Jehovah's boundless dominions, and now the twain approach Oel, and they slacken speed and near each other nearer and nearer to the ships touched and are joined by skilled workmen. Forth leap the two goddesses, Etesia and Onzi, and in no stateliness or ceremony, but like children in whom love is transcendent, they fly to each other's arms amidst the outburst of joy from the countless throng. Yet onward moves the Ethereum ship, majestic and meteor-like, steadily taking course to the new earth. Chapter 19 or chapter XIX, if you're looking at the electronic version. Dairy CM, shalom, shalom. And now the evening of the third day had come, and God and his hosts in Moab were hastening in all things to be ready for the great light that was to descend from high heaven. The 90 million angels looked upward, watching for the dawning of the light, waiting and watching. And many a one who remembered Etesii of 200 years ago wondered if she would return in glory like when she came and crowned God by Jehovah's command. Some were robing themselves in white and hastening nervously like a bride about to wed. Some were half inclined to sorrow for leaving the earth and lower heaven where they had toiled so long. And some were stately by their presence said, Thy will be done, O Jehovah. God ascended the throne, and Haja came up and sat on his right hand, and the light of heaven shone upon them, so that many newborn, especially of the easy and spectators, could not look upon them. God said, One day and hath come and gone, this harvest is but thirty millions. Haja said, Thy son, O Jehovah, hath shaped the destiny of a world. Great is his glory. A light of golden hue gathered above the throne and took the form of a triangle. And there was a graven image at every corner, the which, when read, was I-O-D. And it was in the character of Waga. And it was in the character of Waga bestowed by the Lord on the altars and the house of worship on earth. And its value was 33 million which was the exact number prepared for the emancipated heaven in Ethera, and the 33 was the years of a generation of mortals. God said, Jehovah is one, the living is one, inanimate corpore is one, and these three are the entirety. To teach mortals this, O Haja, is to give wisdom to the earth. Take thou this triangle, O thou son of the Most High, and as long as Cephas endureth on the earth, shall it be bequeath, shall it be the bequeath heirloom of heaven descending from God to God that occupieth the throne. 
Thereupon God stretched forth his hands, and the triangle became fixed and solid, and God hung it on Hajah's neck, adding, In the name of Jehovah, receive thou this jewel as my parting testimonial. Remember that when mortals are raised up to understand this symbol of three in one, then will Cosmon begin to dawn on the earth. Hajah said, O God, thy symbol of the three attributes, love, wisdom, and power. Thou didst leave thy stately home where thou hadst gods and goddesses for companions and come to the far off earth, which was young and curtained round with poisonous gases to guard the young and imperfect angels of other worlds and their wanderings forth with thy wisdom, love, and power concealed. Thou didst give them liberty and yet redeem them. Thou hast stretched forth thy hand over the earth and made it to yield souls to glorify the creator. And yet, in all the while, thou hast never quoted thyself. Oh, that this could be taught to angels and men. Who is it that will not trip or mention himself or make himself a manifest itself? Wow. That mean they got their pride completely under control. Right? And this mentions this in a couple other places as well. Matter of fact, when Haja was chosen to take the throne, that was one of the main attributes that it said about him, right? Because, you know, you got people, man, you know who I am? Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Somebody better tell them about me, right? Listen, let me go back and I'm going to read this again. Animalistic nature, shalom. Malvam is amazing wonder, shalom, shalom. Hold on. On... We just read it again the other day, too. Hold on. I thought I highlighted it. See? I'm way too. Okay, hold on. Haja. No, that's the end. Hold on, let me go back. Somebody remember exactly where it was at? Hold on, I'm going to find it. When Sathantes was about to go travel the earth. Okay, that's too far. Um, no. Sleep. No, 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 no. Chosen. Oh, okay, here we go. Let me just put this here. Let's see. So I can find it. Never mention thyself. Highest attribute. Okay. All right. I found it. On page 20, verse, on page 20, verse 20, right? It says, and Haja, an Ethereum, was chosen, and God commanded them to send word unto Haja with an escort to conduct him to the capital. In due time, the escort brought Haja into the palace of the kingdom of God, and God was sitting on the throne. With music, they came in and filed in front of the throne, forming a crescent with Haja betwixt the horns. God said, by command of Jehovah, this is Sathantes, God here in this particular verse. God said, by the command of Jehovah, have I summoned thee hither, O Haja. Long have I known thee, even on other worlds, of all virtues in which man stand highest, which is never to mention one's self, thou excellest all men in my kingdom. Right? So that's, that's good for all of us to remember. So let's hop back to where we was at. On page 31, and go back to verse 9, and it's talking about Haja, right? Verse 9, page 31, Book of Sathantes. Haja said, O God, thou symbol of the three attributes, love, wisdom, and power, thou didst leave thy stately home where thou hadst gods and goddesses for companions, and come to the far off earth, which was young and curtained round with poisonous gases to guard the young and imperfect angels of other worlds in their wanderings forth 
with thy wisdom, love, and power concealed. Thou didst give them liberty and yet redeem them. Thou hast stretched forth thy hand over the earth and made it to yield souls to glorify the creator. And here it is. And yet in all the while thou hast never quoted thyself. Oh, that this could be taught to angels and men. Who is it that would not trip or mention himself or make himself a manifest itself? Verse 10. This day I am to be crowned to fill the place thou hast built up. But I falter and tremble like a child. Haja burst into tears. And after a little while, he added, O Jehovah, why hast thou laid Haja's tears so close? Thou hast created love in my soul, and it hath grown to be a mountain. God, thy son, who hath been my tutor for a thousand years, and on many worlds, corporal and as, is now thrusting thy glory upon me. God said, He thou the earth and her heavens, for they are to be thine for one day. And remember also that thou that though I ascend with my host to Ethera, yet I have charge of this world unto the completion of this cycle, two thousand eight hundred years. My archangels shall henceforth answer thy prayers unto Jehovah. And also we learned that this Haja is who we even today call Jah, right? Or some may say, yeah, right? But just making sure we're recognizing the differences between the creator and the gods, right? All praises and adoration should be lavished on who? The creator alone, not none of the gods, right? And we know from time to time, people use the, the, the terms of previous gods' names interchangeably with Jehovah, but... I don't necessarily think that's the issue if you understand this, right? Depending on depending on who your audience is and how they understand until they come up. Sometimes they will look, well, I thought Jah was creative. But, you know, sometimes you may or may not want to get into them conversations. Just depending on the understanding of, like I said, who your audience is and who you're around, right? But just remember, creator, right? And I have a couple of different names for them. So, but, you know, we ain't going to get into all that because... This talks about that as well. Okay, listen. Page 31, verse 11. God said, He thou the earth and her heavens, for they are to be thine for one day. This is Athantes talking to Haja. He about to take the throne. God said, He thou the earth and her heavens, for they are to be thine for one day. And remember also that though I ascend with my host to Ethera, Yet I have charge of this world unto the completion of this cycle, 2,800 years. My archangels shall henceforth answer thy prayers to Jehovah. Suddenly a light came down from the firmament like a new star, twinkling with a halo extending wide on every side. All eyes were turned up, full of expectancy. Hushed and still, the 90 million stood. Presently, the star assumed a brighter phase and spread its halo outward with horns descending like a crescent, such as is formed in sacred worship when a God standeth in the midst. Lighter, I'm sorry, larger and brighter, the light grew and, tri and tremulous and waving like sheets, of, like sheets of fire. Then shot down toward Horeb and Moab, three rays of light piercing and in advance of the central orb. And the three rays were red, blue, and yellow, but the crescent beyond was white, and it shone abroad over the heavens so that the corporal sun and stars in the firmament were invisible. At beholding the majesty and grandeur of Jehovah's host descending, millions of Ezeans and clouded souls in the lower heaven broke off, I'm sorry, not broke off, broke and fled some ran and hid to avoid the threatening light. For such is the magnifying power of the ethereal flame that all dark thoughts and hidden evil lurking in the soul are magnified and made so plain that even the dumb can read through them. Millions of the Ethereans on God's staff had seen such scenes before and now stood in glee, firmly riveted, firmly riveted, by the joy within them. To them, a hundred to one clung the newly raised from heaven. I'm sorry. 
the newly raised from earth, who had never known any other heaven, save such as traveleth with the earth around about the sun every year. From these there rose millions of whisperers, saying, It is like a new death, like a new birth. Behold, a man dieth on earth, and his spirit flieth off to another world. And yet now again it flieth off to steal another world. Quickly, now came three great rays, foremost projecting, and these were the orders of marshals from the Ajian fields of Owea and Hanshi. The red lights represented Aji, the blue lights represented Owea, and the yellow Hanshi. And there were of the marshals one million, and they cast the curtains round about to cover all of Horit, the great kingdom. Chief of the marshals was Ajing, and next to him were five sub-chiefs, and next to them, 1,000 tributary chiefs who were masters of the ceremonies, and they came in the center of the descending three great rays of light, came swiftly and direct toward the throne of God, and the substance of the rays of light was like curtains of cloth, one end of which reached up to the now near approaching crescent sea of fire. When the light was near touching on the pillars of fire surrounding Moab, it slackened a little and then more and more slowly. The chieftains leaped from the ethereal flames and stood at the foot of God's throne, saluting in Jehovah's name. God and Hajah stood up and answered the sign, then descended and went to the left and right of Ajin, and they ascended. And Ajin sat upon the throne, and the voice of Jehovah spake through him, saying, Hold up your heads and rejoice, O my sons and daughters. Behold, I come in a flame of fire. I am here, I am here, am there, and throughout the place of heaven, boundless. I gather together, and I put asunder the loves of mortals and angels, but they shall go abroad in my firmament, and behold my glorious works. Down to the corporal world I descend, and carry hence the loved, for they are mine. I will make all people look up to my kingdoms. Down to the lower heaven I come in ships of light, curtained, w curtained about with Ethereum mantles, and gather in my harvest, and gather in my harvest of new births to higher worlds more radiant. My host below shall look up and glorify my everlasting splendors. And here, I believe this mentions plate one. Before I sh let's see, before I show it, it's going to explain this. I'm gonna just keep reading. Yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. I think when they ascend, this is this is the picture of that. So I'm gonna keep reading before I show this. Okay, we're on page 33. Dreadful Cosmos, Shalom, Kizzy, Shalom, Shalom, Brian, Shogi, peace, peace and light, Shalom. We're on page 33, verse 23. I give the tear of grief and sorrow and pity, but in its flowing forth, I come with holier light and power to stir up the souls of my people, for they shall learn to speak to their father, who heareth and giveth ear and is full of love. My joy is in the birth and growing up of souls and in the joy of their joys and in the proclaiming of their adoration for my boundless universe. I call to them in darkness and they come forth, but they halt in the darkness and I call again and I send and I send my higher upraised angels to them and they call also. Yea, I fill the sky with splendor of my worlds, as and corpor, that I may stir man up to rise and enjoy the things I have made. The voice departed, and Ajin said, Behold the glory of the heavens, O my beloved, and the reward of the diligent in heart. Jehovah liveth and reigneth the highest and never to be reached, forever, the forever beyond, and yet ever present. That's good. I'm going to read that again. And while reading this, I forgot or I was reminded that I did not give my adoration of praise. So, Father, we thank you that even though you are far, you are always near. All right, let me read verse, um, let me go back up to verse 23. On page 33, verse 23, 
I give the tear of grief and sorrow and pity, but in its flowing for but in its flowing forth, I come with holier light and power to stir up the souls of my people, for they shall learn to speak to their Father, who heareth and giveth ear, and is full of love. My joy is in the birth and growing up of souls and in the joy of their joys and in the proclaiming of their adoration for my boundless universe. I call them in darkness and they come forth, but they halt in the darkness and I call again and I send my higher upraised angels to them and they call also. Yea, I fill the sky with splendor of my worlds, as and corpore, that I may stir man up to rise and enjoy the things I have made. The voice departed, and Ajin said, Behold the glory of the heavens, O my beloved, and the reward of the diligent in heart. Jehovah liveth and reigneth, the highest and never to be reached, forever beyond and yet ever present. O thou light of light, and life of life. How wonderful is the substance of thy creation. That's beautiful. O thou light of light and life of life, how wonderful is the substance of thy creation. Thou hast given me light to behold thy splendors, which are forever new. O Jehovah, thou past, present, and future of one time, which is and was and ever shall be. Jehovah, thou seen and unseen and potent, who has from thy very self imparted a world to all the living. Hold on. Jehovah, thou seen and unseen and potent, who has from thy very self imparted a part to all the living. Who has raised up these of horrid? Glory be to thee forever and ever. And now, by certain signs and signals, Ajin directed the officers of his host to take possession of Moab and Horrid, and the marshals extended out around the place, and by their presence added new light to the pillars of fire. The marshals were decorated with the colors, with the colored raiment and signs and symbols denoting the places whence they came and their rank as gods and the experience they had passed through. When Ajin ceased speaking, the music of the chosen band of descending angels broke upon the place, first faintly and far off. The work of the marshals was in hold on, the work of the marshals was in keeping with the time of the music, and as the music drew nearer and stronger, so also more and more of the number of marshals descended and filed off to their respective places. Presently, the advance of the horns of the crescent and the cold wave of the falling sea of fire swept over the lower heaven fearfully and of unquestionable power. By a signal from God, the brides and bridegrooms joined in the music of the archangels and was the great glory thereof. Betwixt the horns of the crescent was a star of wonderful beauty, and it came towards God's throne, reflecting countless rays of light, brilliantly and awe-inspiring. And as the star drew near, it opened on the advanced side as a shell is open, and there, with arms entwined, Set Etesiai and Onzi, goddesses. And at the goddesses is reference letter I. So let's go to the end of the book on page 37. And I is the last letter reference, and it says Etesiai and Onzi have been preserved symbolically as Gemini and the signs of the zodiac. Where we at? We at 30 minutes. We're going to pause right here because we like right at the 30 minute mark. And I'll show this picture. Um, I'll show this picture tomorrow. Well, I'll, I'll show it right now. Plate one, right? Because I believe it explains it a little more. 
while they're um when they're taking off but you can kind of see this crescent and a star right this is on page 32 and this is plate one and plate one is entitled earth lower heaven and ethereal host descending i mean i guess it, it, it is appropriate to show it now okay so right here remember the this is the star betwixt the horns of the crescent right so it's like a half moon so this is the crescent and a star betwixt it and normally when they come together and there's a god in the midst that's normally how it is right everybody forms around in a crescent and this would be where um the god stands at when he addresses them right okay so this shows them descending down because it's about to be a graduation and that's for facebook and this is for youtube i'm sorry uncle jb grand rising key shalom shalom Okay, so we'll pause right here because that actually at the end of that when we read the footnote I that was the end of chapter 19. So we'll pause right there and I'll put page 33. I the wrong start page. Oh, I know what I did. Went back to that. Okay. All right, y'all. So we'll pause right here on page 33 at the end of chapter 19. We'll pick this back up and we'll, we'll probably finish this tomorrow because it's only what is 23 chapters. So we got, um, about three and a half pages left. So we'll pick that back up tomorrow. Let's go ahead and hop on over here to the field guide to the spirit world with chapter four. Chapter four is entitled Soul Murder. We are on page 79. All right. And it starts off with a scripture from uh, the book of judgment in Owaspi. Quote, those who seek to do evil, who seek to make others unhappy, who delight in crime and pollution shall, if spirits be called druhas, and there are hundreds of millions of them. End quote. Owaspi, Book of Judgment, chapter 6. I'm sorry. Yeah, chapter 6, verse 10. The term soul murder is occasionally, is occasionally used by psychologists to indicate the sort of emotional abuse that robs a child of ripening self. We find it in forensic, we find it in forensic psychiatry. I need some water. <laughs> Hold on. My mouth feels dry. Hold on. Sheesh. Stumbling over my words. Okay. All right. That's better. Oh my gosh. That's better. Yeah, my mouth was really dry. Hold on. I try not to get water in the morning to break my fast from the night before. Um, I try not to get nothing to at least like noon, but sometimes I got to break it. But when I drink the water, it starts the digestion process. And then, you know, so but that's, that's, you know, all right, let's start over. I'm not going to read the um, scripture again. I just start the paragraph over. Um, the term soul murder is occasionally used by psychologists to indicate the sort of emotional abuse that robs a child of ripening self. We find it in forensic psychiatrist Keith Ablo's book, Inside the Mind of Scott Peterson. Y'all remember that dude? They're about to talk about him a little bit. Convicted in 2004... For the murder of his pregnant wife, Lacey, the all-American Peterson, it soon became clear, had a piece missing. Okay, so I want to finish that sentence. So it shows, um, it has two, uh, um, it has figure A and figure B. I'm about to show it to you and then I'll read it and what they say. Read what it says about this. This is figure A and this is figure B. And I think both Facebook and YouTube can see this, right? Okay, so I'm going to read this. It explains what this is. 
Figure 4.1a and 4.1b, signs of a druge rhymes with stooge, right? So anytime you see druge, D-R-U-J in a waspy is, is druge, right? It rhymes with stooge. And B, okay, this would be the sign for druge, right? I was saying druge. So it's druge, druge, whatever. And B is druke, its mortal counterpart. Druke, druge, druke. S world and the spirit world, mortal world here, right? I read it again. Figures, matter of fact, let me write it. Mortal counterpart. All right. So A would be spirit. B would be flesh, right? Droop look like an aspirin, Kevin. Possibly. Okay, figures 4.1A and 4.1B, signs of A is a druge, rhymes with stooge, and B, droop, its mortal counterpart. One of the most ancient words for wandering spirits of the lowest grade is druhas. In Persia, the word has been retained, signifying spirit of falsehood. In India, it means lost spirit, while in the Eastern European word Dracu, as in Dracula, probably has the same origin. As there, quote, as there are on earth paupers and vagrants and beggars and criminals, so are there in Hada, Hades, or church says hell, Spirits that are a great trial to both mortals and angels, end quote. And that's a waspy book of Lika, chapter 21, verse 2. Um, I don't know that you can explain it like that, Elijah said. So when we see a crescent moon, that's a sign a spirit is being initiated into a God. I don't think all the time, but I see that happening during that process. But it also happens when the just the God who's on the throne is um, just talking to the people. Like, it, at least from what I've seen, I could be wrong, but I've seen it happen in a wasp a couple times, not just at initiation. All right. Well, we're going to pay attention to that while we reading through it a second time just to try and pinpoint exactly the times it's done okay so let me go back i'm gonna read this last uh sentence before i had to break it up to give you what the the um these two signs were okay the term soul murder is occasionally used by psychologists to indicate the sort of emotional abuse that robs a child of ripening self we find it in forensic psychiatrist keith abloh's book Inside the mind of Scott Peterson, convicted in 2004 for the murder of his pregnant wife, Lacey, the All-American Peterson, it soon became clear, had a piece missing. Though ambulatory and superficially normal, Scott, as Abloh's probing revealed, carried murder and child abandonment in, in his deep family history. In the final analysis, though it was his own upbringing, quote, emotionally estranged, end quote, Ablo 2005, page 22, that turned him into a dangerous non-person. Gary Gilmore's brother once remarked that Gary was, quote, murdered emotionally, end quote. Y'all remember that whole, it was all on CNN, Scott Peterson, all this stuff, the trial. I kind of kept up with it a little bit. And I'm just, I'm like, how in the world? And there is another, um, there was another gentleman. I forgot his name, but he kind of did the same thing. But he murdered his wife and his two baby girls. And when I say baby girls, they weren't like babies. They were like six. And I want to say they were six and maybe two years old. It's, it's crazy. 
what happened there. I'm just like, ooh, they need to do a, a, a thing on him. Okay. Non-person. Hold on, let me go back up. No, I was right. Okay. The second paragraph on page 80, y'all. Non-person is a suitable catch-all for vacant self, hollow man, and is, in fact, the translation of the Russian word for sociopath, psychopath. And there's an asterisk at the sociopath for, for slash psychopath. And down at the bottom, the asterisk says, Russia may be the only country with a higher murder rate than the United States. I'll go back up. There are two basic ways to become a non-person. And they represent the two extremes of parenting. In a nutshell, we will soon expand on the subject. There is, on one hand, the overbearing perfectionist, spoiling, quote, helicopter, end quote, hovering type of parent. On the other hand, at the opposite end of the spectrum is the cruel, neglectful, trashy, abusive, rejecting type of parent, which was the end of the spectrum that um, Kevin's mom was that we seen in Split, right? She was at this end of the spectrum. Either extreme, it seems, can engender a psych, a psych, psych, hold on, they broke the word up and it threw me off psychologically no it's not psychologically psych psych, psych i'm about to look this up if i screw this word up anymore hold on <laughs> hold on y'all p h no, i'm sorry that's what i'm getting it wrong is it's psychically i think it's psychically hold on p s p s y c h i C A L L Y. Psychically. I think it's psychically. 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 Okay. I was close enough. Okay. Let me go back. On the other hand, at the opposite end of the spectrum is the cruel, neglectful, trashy, abusive, rejecting type of parent. Either extreme either extreme, it seems, can engender can engender a psychically damaged child with no real sense of self. Quote, my son has done nothing wrong, end quote. Mother of Scott Peterson, Ablo 2005, page 96. Scott Peterson, a child of the first type, was raised by a mother who would, quote, suffocate him psychologically, strangle everything that was uniquely him, gold plate her trophy son and entomb him in her vision of the perfect child anything but the perfect child would not be tolerated by his parents he would have to be nearly invisible to avoid their wrath there are myriad there are myriad and subtle ways a mother can tell her son that he must cease to exist as a person that his true self must essentially disappear, end quote. Ablo, 2005, pages 63 to 64. Before going further, let me say this. Nothing stated in this chapter is meant to be an excuse for crime. We only want to understand. Early trouble doesn't get anyone off the hook. It isn't a get-out-of-jail-free card. We are not bleeding hearts, and we certainly do not want to let lethally dangerous offenders back on the streets. Our only purpose is to enlighten. What the legal system does with such damaged goods is a separate, though related, matter. That said, we plunge into our investigation of these psychic badlands. Quote, teetering on the brink of non-existence, Scott Peterson was absent buried inside himself, a gaping black hole, end quote. Ablo, 2005, pages 97, 107, and 147. In short, an abeyance self, which may prove to be an open door to the most unsavory class of discarnates, drew house, the loose cannons of the lower heaven, Hada. And this is why I would defer and this is why I would differ with Ablo's statement that Scott was, quote, 
spiritually dead, end quote. 2005, page 22. Far from it, he was, quote, very easily led, end quote. Indeed, his void self was a magnet for disembodied entities. Quote, it's the fashion and modern New Age philosophies to deny the very existence of entities dedicated to committing evil in all its guises. New Agers readily embrace various concepts of benevolent, of benevolent incorporeal entities, guardian angels, guides, transcendental masters, a supreme cosmic intellect, etc., but deny the possible existence of any malevolent ones, end quote. Robert H. Codington, Earthbound Conversations with Ghosts. In our general naivety, or is it denial, we speak of spiritualism strictly as a realm of love and light. Spiritology, though, frankly encompasses both the dark and the light, isn't it time for the vaunted consciousness revolution to include or at least acknowledge both sides, the light and the dark of human potential? Quote, obsessors are mostly earthbound spirits. Some of them may commit acts of revenge or do other harm. And if an evil personality gets in control, the obsessed may be driven to criminal insane acts. End quote. Nandor Fodor, Between Two Worlds. Quote, the dragon of vengeance, end quote, as the late great Paul Lindsay, author and FBI veteran, phrased it, operates from both sides. In Polynesia, Marquesian Islands, for example, quote, returning spirits of the dead wander in the country to avenge themselves, returning from Hades, the kingdom of the dead, and posthumous vengeance to persecute and torture another hated person. End quote. Williamson, 1933, 2, chapter 2, I guess 2, was that 2 verse? It looks like a scripture verse. Like chapter 2, verse 45 is 2, colon 45. Quote, it would be more dangerous when I die. End quote. Angel Moratino Resendez the railway killer, quote, evil spirits are both yourselves and the dead whom ye have slain death penalty still live to torment you in spirit. Though their bodies be dead, they obsess you to deeds of wickedness. For even as mortals delight in vengeance, so can the talent grow until its feast lieth in the fruit of hell, Hada. Think not that by the slaying, think not that by slaying a man thou art rid of him. Millions of angels who in mortal life were tortured or put to death take delight in evil, wandering about sometimes in gangs of hundreds or even thousands. End quote. Owaspi, Book of Fragapati, chapter 19, verse 10, and chapter 37, verse 4. Book of God's Word, chapter 18, verse 4, and Book of Judgment, chapter 32, verses 16 through 17. This just reminded me of something that I saw yesterday, right? And this and yesterday, when I, when I saw this, this completely made us change our um our traveling plans that we have planned for the family this next summer coming up, going to Mexico. It's too much crap happening in Mexico at Airbnbs and stuff and people dying. Granted, some of this stuff with this last young lady. And I didn't even, my husband was like, you ain't seen this. This has been on the news for like the last week. We were um we were out somewhere and he was like, man, that's, that's sad. He said, I don't know what in the world going on in Mexico. I was like, yeah, I don't know. But I'm thinking we really should, <laughs> we really should change our plans. Because we was taking the kids. Look, I say we was. We completely changed. We ain't going to Mexico no more. At least not this next summer coming up until we figure out what's going on. And I know these are separate incidents that are happening to people that are going to Mexico. But I'm like, it seems like, I'll just call it like the spirit of murder. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, the hotel fight. Her friends, yeah, her friends killed her, right? I looked at all that. But the point is, people are being murdered when they go to Mexico. I'm like, 
whatever powers and principalities, the, 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 the spirits who are in chaos that are in there, I'm like, they are, they are amped up at this moment when people cross the border into Mexico. This is not the only thing. There are quite a few in like the last couple of weeks that I've seen with people going to Mexico and they being killed. They die of an over, uh, uh, um, I know they said she had alcohol poisoning, um, but clearly if that tape hadn't leaked, no, shucks, the autopsy came back and they said this had nothing to do with alcohol. Her darn uh, spine, her neck was broke and her spine was cracked. Alcohol doesn't do that to you. And from that fight, it looks like when they slung that girl, she hit her and I can't say it did. Maybe she had adrenaline rushing through her body. I'm not sure if that's the point where um, her neck got broken, her spine was cracked, and it was just so so much craziness going on with this video. And I'm like, first of all, you're there with supposed friends, right? Why are y'all fighting? And I'm like, and this girl, I was like, wait a minute, I had to rewind. The clip was probably like 10 seconds, if that. I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, is she naked? I'm like, why is she naked? You know, and she wasn't fighting back. I'm like, she could have been poisoned. Sometimes I, I just I, I just don't see like if I was naked, they could even rip the girl's clothes off. I don't know. I'm just running all these scenarios in my head. So it seemed to me she had to have been semi kind of drug out of it somehow, not to be fighting back naked, right? You in a house full of your friends and it seems like you're the only one naked. Then I, I was running through my head. Maybe she was there. and I don't know. Maybe one of them. Maybe one of their men, maybe they were there in couples and she got caught with one of their men and the girl was pissed and wanted to go take her head. I'm just running all types of scenarios through my head. But the whole point is, there's too much murdering happening in Mexico for us to take our family. The spirits there that I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Zachariah, Shalom. It's been bad in Mexico for a while. The media just don't cover it. I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, so um, you said Dominican Republic too. Look, all the, all these places we wanna we wanna go to places kind of close to give our children a, their first experiences going. Actually, you we've been having our passport. I've had my passport for a while, but they've been everybody's been having their passport for a couple years. Like we got to get our first. The family got to get their first stamp. So we're trying to plan a place to go, but we didn't we didn't cut that off. And it was between Mexico or Punta Cana. I was just like, uh, I don't know. We. We gonna probably need to go to Europe or something, <laughs> and so we just like you know what we just gonna we gonna change that. We let's do another one in the state somewhere. Maybe let's go visit visit your sister and I'm down in Texas or something like that. But yes, yesterday it we 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 completely we was like yep Mexico is out right. So went through it was like okay we're gonna mm -mm, move all this. We just we're gonna start our planning over for this next summer. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's just, that's that's what this reminded me of. It's just, I don't know, because sometimes, depending on what's happened in a place, the spirits that reside there, which is why, like, in a, a good example, like Chicago, because the, the high murder rate, and not just Chicago, but we see, they, they show Chicago all the time, right? And and I've, I've lived there for a little over 10 years. My husband is from there, right? So, but we know how it is. Although we didn't live in Chicago, we went there a lot. We lived 45 minutes away, like in Kansas Key, right? But still, even there, it's the whole area in the unseen realm that because of the murders and stuff, all those spirits are still there in chaos and they're wreaking havoc with the mortals who still live. So that's why I'm thinking that it, it's happening in Mexico. It's like it, it's it's too much spiritual activity for us to go there right now, especially with our smaller children. It's just, I don't know. Yes, I'm going to read this. Um, I'm going to read this verse again. We're going to keep going. We're on page 82. Evil spirits are both yourselves and the dead whom ye have slain. Death penalty, death penalty still live. I'm sorry, I'm reading it wrong. Evil spirits are both you and yourselves. I need to slow down. Evil spirits are both yourselves and the dead. Whom ye have slain, death penalty, still live to torment you in spirit. Though their bodies be dead, they obsess you to deeds of wickedness. For even as mortals delight in vengeance, so can the talent grow until its feast lieth in the fruits of hell hada 
Think not that by slaying a man, thou art rid of him. Millions of angels who in mortal life were tortured or put to death, take delight in evil, wandering about sometimes in gangs of hundreds or even thousands. Owaspi, Book of Fragapati, chapter 19, verse 20, and chapter 37, verse 4. Book of God's Word, chapter 18, verse 4, and Book of Judgment, chapter 32, verses 16 through 17. When the spirit mentors were asked, quote, what are evil spirits, Nubro, 1874, and this, um, you can read this, this conversation that uh, Nubro was having with spirits. It's in Spiritalis. This was before the pinning of a wasp. And he had already, I mean, he, he was born where he was, you know, he was really sensitive to the spirit realm. So when he would, you know, have these conversations with spirits, he would ask questions. And that's what Spiritalis is about. I'm like halfway through it. It's really, really interesting, right? To see where he was before pinning of a wasp, how spiritually inclined he was, and just like the process of all of this over time, right? Oh, and speaking of that, um, the college responded to me. They're tallying up everything, like my total page count <laughs> and everything. So um, they want to make sure they give me the, the right price and everything. Don't nobody worry about that. We're taking care of all of that. But, um, they should be getting back with me again today to let me know the total. And then um, once I go ahead and submit that to them, they'll go ahead and start printing. So we'll have it shortly, y'all. Mm, I'm, I'm hoping in max two weeks we'll have it, right? And get these John Lant plates and see the original penny before they started changing stuff in the wasp. Okay. When spirit mentors were asked, Quote, what are evil spirits? End quote. Nubro 1874. The answer came, quote, perverse creatures who led evil lives and who, being born into the spirit world, still grope about earth, leading men and women into crimes. Some were murderers on earth, and you hanged them. And though you got rid of them, this was a crime for you. For these hangings are visited back upon your society. For spirits influence people to criminal acts. End quote. This was before the penning of a wasp. This is the answer John Newbro got when he asked this question of the spirit realm. Let me read it again. Listen. When spirit mentors were asked, and would listen, and don't think, I know some people are all, they just kind of get all off on this, right? Anybody who's spiritual, right? We ask questions. It seemed like we talking to ourselves, but you see me all the time like, Father, what is that? And I'll get an answer. Like, I will literally hear an answer, right? So this is what's happening now. Is it the Father directly? Well, I believe that I'm in line <laughs> with the keynote, which is the Father. So whoever is relaying the answer to me, the answer comes directly from the Father, Right? So, but I can, you, you to test all things that you get, right? So this is nothing weird for those of us who are spiritual. We know we can ask a question and we can literally hear an answer. Sometimes it's like I hear it audibly, but most of the time I hear it coming from like the inside of me, right? It still flips me out how I hear it sometimes like coming in my ears like this, like, ooh, I know that just sounded like a physical voice. How did you do that? <laughs> right? I still be flipped out sometimes, you know, but listen. When the spirit mentors were asked, quote, what are evil spirits, end quote, Nubaro, 1874, the answer came, quote, perverse creatures who led evil lives and who, being born into the spirit world, still grope about on earth, leading men and women into crimes. Some were murderers on earth, and you hanged them, and though you got rid of them, this was a crime in you. For these hangings are visited back upon your society, for spirits influence people to criminal acts, end quote. We see this in serial killers who randomly steal lives just as their discarnate hosts were or feel they were cheated out of their own life. History is full of homicidal lunatics with psyche sufficiently compromised to hear the voice or talk of spirits but knowing nothing of the unseen world and its inhabitants they jump to the grandiose conclusion that that voice is god himself 
or the very devil. Quote, say, quote, Satan gets into people and makes them do things they don't, they don't want to do. End quote, declared Herbert Mullen, 13 kills, Vronsky, 2004, page 155. They have called their wicked spirit familiars everything from divine inspiration to Satan. More likely, these men are the dupes, the stooges of highly negative entities, some of whom themselves were criminals back, some of them, some of whom themselves were criminal in life and seek vengeance or, quote, desire to experience riotous living again by finding a host body to continue their career of crime, end quote. Maury, 1988, page 102. And right under this, there's a picture of John Wilkes Booth, right? This is figure 4.2, and it says, A lithograph of John Wilkes Booth by J.L. Maggie, illustrator of, quote, America's most lurid disaster scenes, end quote. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that clearly, but this is for Facebook. Make sure that's not blurry. Can you see it? Hold on. Right. If you can't make that out, that's John Wilkes Booth would uh, look like a devil over his shoulder, right? Okay. It's a little lighter on YouTube when I'm showing it. Okay. 719. I'll go a few more minutes. Okay, go to page 84. Okay. Among most psychologists, it is a knee jerk reaction to label the hearer of voices a paranoid schizophrenic. It is not so much the label that bothers me as the assumption that those voices are hallucinated. In fact, the visions and voices of the criminal psychopath may be a form of depraved clairvoyance or clairaudience verging on demonic possession. Surveying the most extreme, most wicked crimes, we find at least half of them involved in some nefarious clairaudience. Here are some examples in Table 4.1. Okay, so I'm going to read all of these. Table 4.1 is murder and the voice. And then just in case y'all didn't know, if y'all if y'all are indeed hearing a voice, but it's telling you to do bad stuff, don't listen to it. It's probably not the creator, and it's probably not anybody in his line of light, right? It's coming from the earth realm. This embodied wants human beings who have rebelled against light and truth, right? Don't listen to it. Test all things that you hear. I cannot stress that enough, especially those, those of you, those of us who can hear spiritual things, right? That's one of the first things you absolutely have to learn. You have to test all that you hear and what you see, your dreams and visions. You have to test them, right? Because some of my people out here looking crazy, right? And they said, God told me or God told me to do it. And you got some of them, Satan told me to do it. What? But they're telling the truth, though, right? Listen, okay. In the table, at the top, the borders, is killer's name, their crime, their experience, and then it gives the source. So I'm going to read it in, in that order for each line, right? I'm going to read the killer's name, I'm going to read their crime, their experience, and then the source, right? Okay. First one, killer's name, Amina killed her children. Heard, quote, heard the voice of Allah ordering her to sacrifice her children, end quote. Now, let's just, ooh, bras, listen, hold on. Kerwin, 1997, page 254. Now, how many of us can tell who this voice really was? She said Allah, right? Allah told her, Allah is just, it's just another term for God, right? She essentially saying God told her to do it or Allah told her to do it. But who told her? Was it creator? Or did it come from somewhere else other than creator? Right? And bonds. Exactly. Church folk do it too. The Lord told me to tell you. Right? 
I stare away from people, especially if they always got a word from the Lord for somebody. Just stay away from them and they shenanigans. I ain't got time for all that crap. <laughs> and they act like they so spiritual. And I just, I just smile and I'm just going about my way, right? I just, I won't even engage. I'll sit, I'll be nosy and see what they telling other people. I'm like, hmm, they ain't caught that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You about to be duped. <laughs> okay. We know that this was not creator talking to Amina, right? Amina killed her children, quote, heard the voice of Allah ordering her, ordering her. That's another key, ordering. Creator allows us to choose, right? He'll let you see the matter all the way out to the end and let you realize. And he'll sit and talk like, okay, baby, now what you think? Was that the right way to go? Or should you have considered something else? I probably should have considered something else. <laughs> Okay. All right. So what have you learned? That's how the creator works with us, right? Okay. Next one. David Berkowitz, seven, I'm sorry, six semi-random kills, quote, voices, thousands of them urged him to act, end quote. Klausner, 1981, page 195. Ken Bianchi strangled 10 women. The spirit, quote, said he could come into my body and do terrible things, end quote. O'Brien, 1985, page 182. Orlando Camacho cut off his wife's head. God, saints, and gangsters talk to him and read his thoughts. Markman and Bosco, 1989, pages 24 through 27. Eric Chapman, killed grandmother ordered by a voice to kill someone in the family <sighs> i get it i mean i get it markman and bosco 1989 page 302 to 308 richard chase six vampire kills experience converse with quote invisible people end quote markman and bosco 1989 page 162 john wayne gacy oh look 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 you said the name before i even read it john wayne gacy sodomized and killed 33 young men quote he could hear the other guy disembodied screaming end quote t cowhill 1987 page 197 ed game serial killer serial killer his dead mother spoke to him probably like jason Voorhees' mama he he yeah douglas and oshlaker 1998 page 371 gary gilmore two senseless murders quote he heard voices coming through the jail vents end quote Gilmore, 1994, page 250. Joe Callinger, Calling, Callinger or Callinger, three homicides, including his own son, commanded by, quote, voice of the demon, end quote, as well as by, quote, God of the universe, end quote. Schreiber, 1984, page 85 and 118. And let me tell you something. Listen, sometimes... Even while reading through a waspy and coming in contact or coming across some of these videos where people, they use some of these terms that they really overplay, like the universe. And although using, you can, you can, you can call creator like the universe, right? You can, right? But a lot of these terms, it's like, I don't even want to use none of these terms. I'm going to stick with what I know. Because people, if you use one of these terms, depending on what group of people you're talking to and where, one of these words that you use to refer to the creator triggers somebody, right? And it, it completely cuts them off. I'm just like, you know what? I ain't using the universe. I halfway want to use Jehovah, right? Because of the because of the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm just being honest. That's why, like, when I talk, I'm just like, Father, you had it. You know what? I'm just gonna stick with my adoration term the most holy and father, right? Because you really can't go wrong with that. It, because I'm just like, I really shouldn't care about what other people think, but in a way I do because I want to make sure I'm not adding to their misunderstanding of things, right? And it's just, that's just something I deal with because especially 
when you come out of the church and go into the Hebrew roots and you start breaking down terms and names and stuff and, and people talking about that you had these conversations about what L means and, and this and that and you know you start getting into the terms people they they seem to stay stuck there and they like never grow and once you get to the Jehovah or oh, it's false God because a couple of people send me messages you know Jehovah's a false God over here and I'm like I I just, I didn't really have the strength to kind of go back and forth. So I just didn't respond to it. And I'm not sure if you watching, but I purposely didn't respond because there, there is more information that I feel like you should have, right? So sometimes when I realize people are lacking information because I used to be there, right? I just, I won't engage. I won't for a while. I just won't engage, you know? And when we come across it and we get into it, I may say a little bit about it just to help with the information that I've gathered so far, you know, and in hopes that you will add it to your learning as well. Like put it all on the table, right? Um, but it, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Right, Elijah, especially when you're teaching others. They'll what? Yeah, they do. They watch you like a hawk, right? Listen, they don't, they don't even watch you like a hawk. For the sake of learning, they watch you like a hawk so they can catch you and trip you up on something you say, right? And then it just takes the whole teaching, what you're trying to say. It's like, mm, see, I told you to this. Let me bring this out because the KJV and this and the strong skin coordinates and I got this right here. And well, when you look at the, the, the etymology of this from the Hebrew terms and it start, I'm like, you know what? I, darn, can we just have a regular conversation without you? Can we? <laughs> it's like. See, this is why, this is why I don't engage half of use, use with the S on the end. <laughs> it's like, dang, ain't none of us perfect. Can we just like grow together? Okay, what's your, okay, why you believe that? Okay, well, let me tell you, I don't agree with that, but, and this is why, this, this, oh, well, I can see that. Okay, well, yeah, okay, well, let's keep going, because, you know, it has to be a common even ground somewhere, right? I just, let me get back to these killers. Dr. John Kapler, manslaughter and severe medical homicide attempts, quote, heard voices inside his head commanding him to commit violent acts, end quote. Ablo, 1994, page 6 and page 111. Herb Mullen, 10 kills, including a priest, killed, quote, at the urging of the voices, end quote. Wrestler, 1992, page 20 and page 146. Abdul Oman, deadly assault and, and attempted homicide. Voices told him the doctor was the devil. Kerwin, 1997, page 96. Joel Rifkin, strangled and or dismembered 17 prostitutes. Voices led him to his victims. Kerwin, 1997, page 51 to 52. Listen, what's crazy is, I mean, I guess he could have been riding around. He could have known where all the hideout and corners were for the prostitutes. But to have and have verified, like, I don't know. I didn't look into his story, but he strangled and or dismembered 17 prostitutes. Like 17 of them to have a voice that precise. I mean, how many prostitutes stand on one corner? I mean, I guess you could hit blocks. Like, how many corners did you have to hit to get 17 and over what period of time? Right. And all of them were true. And I, I don't know. I just I think about some of this stuff. But this tells you that some of the voices that they hear, and even though there are darker voices, they do give you a little bit of truth and they, they lead you to places, right? It's like they got to get your faith up for you to believe in them because they give you truth and stuff. And you go, like, oh, yeah, that's right. That is a prostitute. How did you know that a prostitute would be here? And just not just prostitutes. I'm being funny. Um, but that's where a lot of people, they get tripped up at because what they hear is truth or, or facts. Like, yeah, she's a black woman. Oh, you told me truth. Yeah, you know, but they, they that's what. And I think that's a lot of what happens with people who get into the Jesus worship and worshiping the idols. Because if you worship Jesus, you're worshiping an idol, right? 
Um, you should be worshiping the creator, not the creation of the creator. And even though the spirits give you, and a lot of times will give you truth, that's what leads people off, right? The word he told me true. Well, how can you tell me it's not because that was true? I agree that that was true, but still this is wrong. It's like, um, something my grandma used to say, she was like the devil afloat. The, the devil tell you 99% of the truth just to float one lie right and it's that one lie that the people can't see and it's that one lie that get people off because of the illusion of all the truth that came forth right it's just is is weird but i understand it so we have to be really really careful okay arthur shawcross killed and mutilated 15 people plus two children quote he hears voices commanding him to do certain things, end quote. Olson, 1993, page 117. John Schrank, shot at Theodore Roosevelt in 1912. A voice instructed him to thus avenge the McKinley assassination. Donovan, 1962, page 102. Norman Simmons, sodomized and strangled nine boys, quote, a very dominating and serious, end quote, voice urged him on. Wrestler, 1997, pages 180 to 81. June Smith, arson and suicide. Voices in the dark called to her, quote, I want you. McCaw, 1998, page 134 to 35. Danny Starrett, serial rape, one homicide. Quote, I heard somebody whispering inside me. Nafe and Smith, 1995, page 134. Den Dennis Sweeney killed New York representative Al Allard Lowenstein. Quote, constantly harassed by voices in his head. End quote. Kerwin, 1997, page 247. Peter Sutcliffe. 13 kills, mostly prostitutes. Quote, I heard God's voice. Hold on. Yeah, quote, I heard God's voice, end quote. Quote, he heard the voice hundreds of times, end quote. Morrison, 2004, page 134. Byrne, 1985, page 247. Elijah said, you know... When you come out of the churches and you look at the other teachers, you truly don't want to be fooled and want to find the creator, which is hard. I know, right? That's why it's like, we, yeah, I agree, right? It's like, we looking at everything. It's like, I put everything on the table. We we sick of being fooled. Christian, Christianity had us duped for way too long. And we look foolish, at least in my estimation now. I, when I look back at some of the stuff, I'm like, how, how, like, that is, oh my gosh. And so now I'm asking everybody questions. Like, if you got questions, this is the place to come, right? We're going to read over your manuscripts or your your holy books or whatever you want to call it. And we're going we're gonna to see, right? We're going to put it to the test. Some people don't like that, right? Because they still into, like, I I had to block. Other than the people that come here posting porn links, there was, like, two people that I actually, I felt like I had to block. And I don't really block nobody, Right? <laughs> But I, this one particular person, I blocked them because I could tell that they, they, from what they were saying, they were Christian, right? Um, but the feel, the disrespect, and I even put, um, you can set up uh, parameters on your YouTube channel and I blocked out like all the curse words and stuff so people can't type it in I try to keep the disrespect at a minimum right like ask questions as long as you're not disrespecting nobody but this person because he felt like he felt in his estimation that I was leading people away from the father because we're checking into stuff and he really didn't like when we was reading through the Anunnaki Bible and stuff like that. It's just, this is blasphemy. And like when, when I say he was going in, he was going in on me. And I was really like, oh my gosh, have you like, you must just come in and out at 
random times and it seemed like the times that they came in like we would read something and everybody here know if you've been following along yeah we read the Anunnaki Bible we don't follow it but we we read into it like because all the stuff we hear and it had Nubaru and all this stuff like he really couldn't get over some of this stuff um he was like that is blasphemy against God and all of this stuff and you need to repent you're leading people astray it was him I had to block and this other woman and I went and I unblocked I unblocked the guy. The woman, she was just, she was just too nasty, nice to me. I was just like, sis, you gotta find somebody else. I just, I can't deal with you. Like it was draining reading some of her stuff. You know, and I, I try to listen to people and see, but it was like, like yo, like you are full on, full blown Christianity. Like, like it, there's like, like you're completely still under the deep delusion. Like nothing. You're like questioning nothing. Um, but I did, I went and unblocked the other guy because I could, they, there was a difference between him and her. Right. And, you know, he was like, sister, you, you getting off. And I was like, okay. And I tried to explain, listen, this is what we do here. Right. And what we, we're testing everything. Um, so I blocked him and that's about, he was blocked for a whole month, you know? Um, and then I went and I unblocked him, but it seemed like he was watching my page, just waiting to see if he would ever be unblocked because he, I don't know. If he had a, I don't know, if he was checking daily to see, but the day I unblocked him, he was back up there with the same garbage. Like, you must have been watching me from another channel or something. And it was like, he just picked up with his berating me, like, went and it got to, at first, it was like, sister, you're getting off this and this and that. And I was trying to explain to him, listen, this is what we're doing here. We're, we're going through everything because we came out of the deep delusion in Christianity, and we want to make sure we ain't getting led astray. So we're questioning everything, and we're going to read it out loud. We ask some questions. I allow people to ask questions here, you know, and it's just like, and I literally I had to go block him again. I was like, I can't, I can't deal with this guy, you know, um, and looking at his channel and stuff, and it's, it's classic Christianity stuff, and I get it if that's where you at, but it's like, man, I already told you what this channel is about. If you don't like it, you can just, like, not come right and he came just to leave comments and and sending emails and it is crazy i just i don't get it people i'm like grow up like you don't ain't nobody making you stay here like if you don't like it just turn the channel okay so that was the end of um that that, that was the end of this chart yeah, yeah I was, I was boy chill you just open your eyes What Sammy Little confessed to how many murders? That is crazy. 93. He said he killed 93 women between 1970 and 2005. What's crazy is I've never heard of this guy. I'm going to have to go look him up. That's crazy. Wow. Okay. All right. So go back. One page. Where we at? Mm, let's see. Uh, I think I'm going to end after this next little chart of criminals, right? So I'm going to read this and then we, we're going to have to pause here because I do need to leave in a little while. Not, not directly, but in a little while. So it'll give me a little bit of time to, like I said, read over this next portion. We're going to end on page 88. Okay. So on page 86 at the top, quote, that insurgent horror lay caged in his flesh where he heard it mutter, end quote. Robert Louis Stevenson, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In a similarly strange case, The Strange Case of Dr. Clapper, Keith Avalo, a decade before tackling the Scott Peterson saga, took on the harrowing story and mind of Dr. John Kapler, the California anesthesiologist previously discussed. The sinister voices arousing Kapler had instructed him to administer the wrong medicine to his patients. Quote, I attempted to kill three patients, end quote, Kapler later confessed. Spirits also urged him to, quote, jump in front of a bus, end quote, or as he got in his car to kill himself in an accident. The so-called hallucination commanded him to, quote, commit mayhem, end quote. Yes. Can can um does get off at eight eight? I'll let you get a little bit of time on it. Uh, when I get off, when I take it from Bella. Only on the percipient, 
only the percipient knows how powerful, authoritative those commands can be. Driving along, he heard voices and felt possessed. Quote, it was as if the car was being driven by someone else. End quote. And there's an asterisk after that. And at the bottom it says, serial killer Richard Masek also had, quote, a car with a mind of its own. End quote. Morrison, 2004, page 24. Go back up. He was told to, quote, hit and run. End quote. Ablo, 1994, pages 10 through 12 and page 77. Remember by a schoolmate as, quote, sort of a non-person, end quote, Kapler emerged from a terrifying childhood, his home life, violent and alcoholic, manipulative and unstable, held secrets and shame, denial and abuse, Ablo, 1994, pages 29, 67, and 31. Kapler had been con conceived out of wedlock to two teenagers in 10th grade. It was a big family secret that caused him lifelong shame and turmoil. It didn't help that both parents drank and fought. Feisty cuffs, dishes flying, constant screaming, or that the only child they beat, there were three, was John. All this set the stage for devastated self. Sheesh. Quote, Humiliation obliterates him, a man, end quote. James Baldwin, The Evidence of Things Not Seen, page 87 at the top. Inside was a void, prey to usurping entities who dictates psychiatrics, psychiatrics, hold on, psychiatric, I'll be messing this word up, psychiatrics, psychiatrics, it's actually trist. Inside was a void prey to usurping entities whose dictates psychiatrists label, quote, command hallucinations, end quote. But were they or had Kapler's empty vessel of self-attractive negative controls, his own persona, quote, enemy occupied territory, end quote, invaded now by, quote, a destructive agency, end quote, what Ablo called a, quote, dark domain of demons, end quote. Kapler was in the grip of a force he could not shake. Quote, do I have to do it? I was begging the voice not to make me do it, end quote. Ablo, 1994, page 111, pages 52 to 54, 41, and 89. The voices were, quote, inside his head, end quote. And as John himself put it, Quote, I don't go through any thought process. I just do what it says. End quote. As Manfred Gutmacher, as Manfred Gutmacher, 1960, page 59, put it, quote, the usual role of thinking is conspicuously, conspicuously absent in these cases. End quote. Quote, while under control, their medium's own will is set aside. They are as helpless as the subject of the mesmeric, end quote. Harry S. Alcott, People from the Other World, quote, Who knows, may not all men be as automatons, some in the hands of gods and some in the hands of devils, end quote. Owaspi, Caillou, a.k.a. Confucius, Book of Escra, chapter 36, page 47. Something I'm um I think I'm gonna finish reading this and then I'm um I'm gonna say this. Something I, I realized yesterday while I was going through I had put on um glass. Glass is a part of the trilogy of split, um unbreakable, and glass being the it's the, the third one, right? And it has the three characters, glass, Kevin, and uh Bruce Willis, which was the unbreakable dude that didn't die in a train wreck, right? Um, I noticed something, and I had to sit back and I had to look. And we even see that all through Owaspi, how the creator... It's amazing how that there's this... Um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Um, 
you can see through everything the the topic of all of all the mayhem is a lack of love right it's a lack of love and love being shown appropriately right and after yesterday just kind of looking at some things that i was looking into i was like you know what that um scripture that you find in the new testament i mean you can find it everywhere like through the bible in different places but truly love does conquer all and that's how the creator um feels about everything and our responses to people even when they do us wrong like we should always respond out of love now i know coming out of christian church like i ain't no punk you ain't gonna run over me you go through that whole thing right but as you go through here and you look at it um when you respond even if you respond even if you are justified and and let's just say hitting somebody back or taking somebody's life or whatever not bringing into the equation that there is a spirit world and life doesn't end here it makes everything make sense on why at least to us it seemed like love here is a lopsided but if we include in the equation the spirit realm which is constantly superimposed over us and which we are a part of and which we will all be born into it's like we don't see the fruition of the whole equation of love and why we're told to practice it the way we're told to practice it here we don't really understand it until we get there and it's like oh my gosh even thinking about moses how he cursed pharaoh right the whole love thing and even then when pharaoh was delivered at that time after moses had already moses was, he's already in ethereal at a certain level he had to go back and he weeped and he repented before the creator and he 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 regretted that he had ever put that curse on pharaoh he said i should have just forgiven him you know i'm just like man it's just i don't know i'm understanding this a little bit more and i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a shit out because I, I had to type it out listen let me finish reading this and i get into it just a little bit more okay listen i'm gonna read this quote again who knows May not all men be as automatons, some in the hands of gods and some in the hands of devils. Or Waspy, Caillou, a.k.a. Confucius, Book of Astro, chapter 36, verse 47. We know quite a bit about the automatons performed by the fully entranced medium who produces, say, automatic writing or automatic drawing without a thought, quote, without a thought of my own, end quote, William Howitt in Fodor, 1966, or by the sleepwalker or the person speaking in tongues. We need also to understand the deranged automatons of the criminal. And we're going to read this right here. It's going to give these other killers, and then we're going to pause after this. Okay, with the bottom of page 87. Instances of, criminal, of criminals, autom automatisms include one, David Berkowitz, serial killer, total change of handwriting, seen also in the Zodiac. Allen's, quote, hand printing did not match Zodiacs, end quote. Excuse me. Gray Smith, 1987, page 209, also seen in the MPD case of Henry Hawksworth, whose author Dana wrote in, quote, handwriting different than his own, end quote. Hawksworth, 1977, page 229. Fred Coe, serial rapist, quote, he was like a robot, end quote. Olson, 1983, page 77. I also found the word, I also found the word robot in descriptions of other killers. John Liss, Joe Callinger, Ted Bundy, Arthur Shawcross, Gary Ridgway. J.W. Gacy or John Wayne Gacy, serial killer, quote, it was not his voice, end quote. Gacy was a sleepwalker and hyperprasics. Morrison, 2004, page 82 and page 85. Several sleepwalking homicides were labeled, quote, non-insane automatism, end quote. Kerwin, 1997, page 137. Joe Killinger, homicide, quote, Something is speaking through you, end quote. There were also strange, quote, automatic movements, end quote. From him also came, quote, another laugh completely different from his, end quote. I've, I've heard people do 
that sometime, right? I'm like, oh, shoot. Listen. And that's, uh, quote, another laugh completely different from his, end quote. Schreiber, 1984, page 134 through 35 and page 338, page 84. Richard Masek, serial killer, described as a, quote, zombie, end quote, hyperpraxis, exhibited a, quote, robotic kind of cruelty, end quote. Morrison, 2004, page 43. Gary Ridgway, Green River Killer, quote, anyone who observed Gary would remember the automaton, the robot, end quote. Rule 2004, page 650. Danny Starrett, Rape, Homicide, Automatic Drawing, Nafe and Smith, 1995, page 126 and 178. Dan White, Homicide, quote, it was like a reflex. I wasn't thinking, end quote. Blinder, 1985, page 44. Okay, so we're going to pause right here, right? And hold on, let me put my page number. 79 to 88. So yesterday, when I was watching it, and this is going back to this whole love thing. It's a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This, uh, this common theme thread that flows through everything even watching like superhero movies and cartoons when they teach and lessons the ultimate lesson is always love right love conquers all but here is something that i noticed okay so you remember watching uh split for those of you watch i haven't said long enough long enough now over the last week or so that i'm sure everybody probably wouldn't watch or at least seen it before okay so in split remember kevin the actual native person right who was in the sunken place Kevin um, was that uh, he had all that trauma and stuff happen to him when he was nine years old. Hence the, the nine-year-old Hedwig who was um, inside his body, right? He's a, his, his, his superpower was to be nine years old forever, right? So, but what happened, uh, Kevin, and not just at nine years old, but he had all this trauma inflicted upon him when he was younger by his mother. And when his father... Um, left or so that was a story that was told to him that his father left to go get his mother help and he never returned so he had this anger toward his father when he didn't really realize his, his father didn't just leave him and never come back his father actually died right and if you watch these three movies together uh unbreakable split and glass it's a trilogy Kevin's father was on that same train with Bruce Willis, the unbreakable guy, superhero, right? He died on that train, on that train crash. So it wasn't till Glass where the Beast or Kevin found out that his father had actually died and didn't just leave him, right? Because he was upset because how could you leave me with a deranged mother that you knew she beat me? And he was trying to help his mom get free because she had mental issues going on with her, right? But if you do a, a deep dive into Kevin's mom, although they didn't do it here, but for somebody to inflict that type of pain, especially on a child, they got some stuff going on with them that happened to them, right? And they're kind of like repeating cycles. So they didn't even get it to his mom, but you can clearly tell that if you understand these things, right? Okay, so the whole point of bringing all this out, remember when Kevin would come to, right? He would come to himself. He would break through, come out of that sunken place where all the other altars were controlling his body. Um, remember Casey, the girl, the girl that got free, um, at the end of split, she was the only one that lived. It was Casey making this connection with the real Kevin. When she saw that paper said, say his name, Kevin, his whole name. And when you said his name, it brought Kevin out of the sunken place to the top. Right. But Kevin had gone through so much in his life that he liked being in that sunken place. And you could see that when you watch glass when they had them sitting in there mr glass kevin and uh the i keep forgetting his name bruce willis name in there um she called him forth and kevin came out and he was like why do you guys keep calling me i don't want to be here you know and he would be like crying and he would just go like he would kevin would choose to go back in and let the altars take control of his body but when casey came when casey recognized that because remember casey had gone through trauma she was molested by her uncle and she was a cutter she began cutting herself right the pain would you know like we ain't gonna get into all that but anyway 
she understood what Kevin was going through. And so she made a connection with Kevin, her abductor, her killer, whatever you want to call him. But she recognized the different personalities. And so she would try to talk to Kevin. And you would notice um, they showed it. They showed just a little glimpse of it when she touched him, right? When she touched him and split it was like it kind of calmed him down a little bit, but you see it even more so. You just get a quick glimpse of that. You don't really, if you're not paying attention, you miss it. But it's not until glass when they bring Casey back and she's going in there and she go to talk to him. And she said, can I talk to Kevin? No, um, no. She They called his name, brought Kevin up. Um, and when Kevin came, she put her hands on. It's like that, that touch, right? Because think about... Uh, um, studies that they do with children right they they separate some and i think this is a cool study i really do they get a group of children and they separate them and they just kind of leave them to themselves no physical human touch and they have the ones that they pick up and hold all the time and they constantly get this interaction well the ones who don't get any kind of touch they're kind of like depraved of things and they grow up cold and it's like you know, they have a lot of issues going on with them because they're, they didn't get the whole nurturing portion of life with physical touch and stuff like that. And so what happened was, and you can kind of call that love as well. So anytime she yes, put her hands yes, on him yes, and Kevin was there, it would literally calm the beast. And even when the beast had manifested um, in glass towards the end, like he was full blown beast. It's like, don't go near him when that altar is there because the beast eats people. Literally, the beast eats people like cannibalize, right? But Casey wasn't afraid and she understood what was happening. And while he was full blown beast, yeah, Kevin liked Casey, right? When he was full blown beast, Casey put her hands on him and the doctor realized that she said, We need you, right? Um, so, and here's something she said. Oh, hold on one second, Facebook, because I, I need to put it in my, what you call it. I'm going to read what she said. I was like, oh, my gosh. Okay. All right, Facebook is back. Okay, let me bring it up what she said. What the doctor, the new doctor said to Casey. She said. She said, hold on. She said, the power of true loving, the power of true love, physical affection, it's like something supernatural. And it's the lack of it that has caused this, and only the true version of it can heal it. And her name in that movie is Dr. Ellie Staple, right? And she said, when she said it, I was like, wait, what did she just say? Because I had already been looking into a lot of this stuff, right? And I'm like, love definitely is the key. And we don't see the fruition of that for real here until we get into the spiritual realm. like Because we completely don't really bring in this factor. Because a lot of times we don't realize that we're spirits here. And this is just the first phase of life for us. We have to literally learn how to... Um, how to conquer and um and uh uh what's the word um we got to learn the elements here and all this thing because it's a part of spirit right um but then when we're really truly born and we no longer have this flesh this anchor all of these things you can kind of begin to see why you had to learn this here right i'm gonna read it again she said let me read it one more time I wish I had a bigger, what you call it, so I could not have to do all this shuffling between screens. She said, the power of true love, physical affection. And she noticed that when Casey touched Kevin, right, when he was the beast, and it literally calmed the beast down, and it brought Kevin out. And even if it was any kind of other altar there, by her touching him, and like Kevin calling him, it would literally, it don't matter who was on the scene, the beast. And the beast was considered the strongest altar of them all, right? Like, don't, like, he's the strongest. He, like, the beast is our hero, right? You don't come, you don't mess with us. Love calmed the beast and brought the real person back out, which was Kevin. And it said, the power of true love. 
physical affection is like something supernatural. It's the lack of it that caused this. And in the movie, it's the lack of the love that Kevin got from his mom when he was a child that created his deranged state of mind with all these multiple um, personalities and disorders and all these things that happened to him, right? And um, it said, it's the lack of that that caused this and only the true version of it can heal it, i.e. Casey, her noticing that when Casey, because she truly cared, and it's crazy how all this happened, how do you begin to care for your murderer? It's it's crazy. Um, but when she realized what was happening to him, she felt bad for him because she was like, I've been there. I understand. I was abused as well, right? And even at the beginning of Glass, when she first came back to see him locked up in that same asylum, you know, um, uh, when she was talking to him, she let, she let him know. She said, my uncle is in jail. She said, I did that. Meaning she conquered her fears, her beast, her abuser, the one who was abusing her, her uncle who was raping her and molesting her throughout her life. She finally got enough strength, strength and courage to speak out about it. And her, her uncle was now in jail, right? And she said, he's in jail. I did that. Kevin you can do the same thing, right? Trying to walk him through the process of being healed, right? He has to he has to acknowledge for one, like, yes, I've been abused. I want to kill him, right? But that's not the case, right? And she just kind of a little bit, if you watch the movie, you see how she walks through the process and she shows him. She's literally trying to help him get free, right? Because if he would acknowledge these things, he, he would himself be able to overcome all these multiple personalities and all these other spirits that are inhabited in his body and he would gain the strength to kick them out and i thought that was so amazing just watching that i'm gonna read it one more time one more time y'all listen i that like i said that was just a revelation in itself to me she said doctor said the power of true love physical affection is like something supernatural it's the lack of it that's caused this and only the true version of it can heal it and casey in this in this um, movie was the true version of love right forgiving because you realize that your abuser has themselves been abused right and she kind of um she kind of empathized i think that may may not be the right word but she she looked past all the all the stuff that's up in front she was able to see the deeper issue right and she was able to well he died at the end but at the end you could see as he was dying he chose he said i'm gonna hold on to the light right and in in split they 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 have this saying like um hold on to the light or you're going to give the light to the multiple meaning those are the ones that's up front those are the ones you're talking um that's the one you're talking to and going into the into the void into the darkness meaning that you are a bay itself you don't you don't even want to have parts of this let somebody else drive my body but kevin at the end you can see that he got it he said you know what i'm going to hold on to the light to the very end and he chose to be present he chose to be there not allowing the other multiples to control him although they was they was freaking out they was wigging out that they was about to lose this host right but eventually in the end the host did die along with kevin look and after they all died here i go back thanks for watching i'm like now all of them born, all of them been born into chaos now <laughs> kevin too right so but yeah, I thought I thought that was really, really good. So if y'all get a chance, and that's I don't know, that's good. Somebody should um I don't know. I, I just like using movies because they're they're really good visuals. But I think that's a good one to look at while at least one of the ones so far. We we ain't even halfway through the book yet. But that's one of the good ones. That little trilogy is good because you can see a lot of this stuff in that. It gives you a good visual to look at, right? So uh unbreakable split and glass matter of fact i want to say unbreakable is the first one unbreakable yeah unbreakable and split because in unbreakable if you don't put it together there is um there is a woman and a little boy after the train wreck which is an indication of kevin and his mom when he was nine years old you will see him they're walking through i, I don't i'm not sure it was a crowded place 
But you know, the unbreakable dude, like I said, I keep forgetting his name. He's able to have visions and see things happening if he touch you, right? So he can't just, you know, you know, if something's going on, he would actually have to touch you to feel what's going on. And he, when he bumped, he was walking through this crowded place. He had on his little rain poncho that he had on. He happened to walk past Kevin when he was nine years old and his mom. And he bumped into his mom. And when he bumped him, you will see it. You got to go back and watch it. You, you will miss it if you're not paying attention to it. You had to watch it a few times just to even catch all of that. He bumped when the poncho dude, Bruce Willis, bumped into Kevin's mom. He paused because he felt something. And he turned around and you saw the little boy being held by his mom holding his hand in his face not like a happy little boy but you could tell something was probably wrong but most people they probably look at it like oh she can probably told him know about something that kid gonna throw a fit but you can kind of see kevin's face as a nine-year-old boy you get a glimpse of kevin in unbreakable then you see full-blown kevin with all his multiple person multiple um personality disorders full-blown and split and then you have glass, which is the, 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 the end of the trilogy that brings all of that together. Yeah, one is a prequel. Yeah, I think uh, Unbreakable is the prequel. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think. Did I get that? Did I get that right? I think Unbreakable is the prequel. Then you have Split, and then you have the sequel, Glass. I don't know. I probably could have screwed that up. But it's all three of them together. <laughs> and I looked it up, and it is a trilogy. I looked into the author of it, and I, I be screwing up the Shema Lamb, the guy, his name, who did all of that. And I looked into some background and um, some of the behind-the-scenes things and what they put in there and how they brought all that together. I'm like, first of all, this dude is a freaking genius. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, that's it, y'all yeah all right hold on let's um hold on set apart said something i don't know where it is oh no that was tabitha she said makes you wonder why these movies are made it's like hollywood trying to convey a message to the world i do really believe they are sometimes people look at hollywood like um oh they're evil and there is some evil things that come out of hollywood right just like it's some you always got one in the bunch right that's how i look at it but if we look at it i really do believe that hollywood whether you want to call it hollywood but those in the movie making industry i think that's part of creators plans right because look at how we understand things that's just how we understand and we process things. Even as children, give them stories, right? And I, I think the whole Marvel collection, that comes from creator. That, that's why, that, those are my thoughts. That's, that's, that's what I'm sticking with right now, right? Because <laughs> there's so much truth in it. But yeah, you, I mean, you, you, you got some really wicked things that come out of Hollywood. And like I said, you can have that wherever you go. You do. You, you, you got that one in the family or you got that that one at the church or wherever you at it's always that one it's light and darkness everywhere right but we should be able to decipher between all of it and be able to pull the lessons of light out of it discard the rest right if you don't know what to do with it i got matches you set it on fire right i keep matches on me all right y'all i love y'all i'm about to get out of here y'all it is thursday November the 17th, 2022, day 265 of year four, reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. And of the four-year consecutive day count, day 1,284, we read in the Wild Speed Book of Santhes, pages 30 through 33. And we read in the Field Guide to the Spirit World. We started in chapter four, which is Soul Murder. That's the title. And we started on page 79, and we paused on page 88. And let's see. Um... Mm. Father, we thank you for the power of the story and movies. Yes, I, I like that. All right, y'all. So, need to know it was an optical illusion you posted. Tick, were you talking to me? The optical illusion I posted. I think I know what you're talking about. I posted on my on my my regular Facebook page. Murphy tried. That's what you're talking about. It gave you directions so you could see. Yes, you didn't follow the directions, did you? It gave you directions up there on how to see it. It said, take your phone and look at the optical illusion from the uh, the speaker, right? So, 
Say this is your phone. Say this is your cell phone. You couldn't see it? Okay, try it again. This is your cell phone. Take your cell phone. Turn it flat like this. And look at the optical illusion from this way. When you look at it this way, you can see the... You can see what it says. Right, you can see what it says. Try it again. And if you still can't type under it, say, Pam, I still can't see it. And then I'll tell you what it say. But do it again. You did, you blind. Okay. Hold on, let me see. Hold on, let me, let me, just, let me just pull it up. So I, feel, I wanna say it exactly what it says. You know what, I can't do it here. I gotta look at it from my phone. Okay, what I do, I'll go to it and I'll tag you in it. You try it a few times. Okay, I'll tag you in it and tell you what it says. I got I to look at it again myself, you know. All right, y'all. So with that being said, yes, I love you all. Enjoy your day. Stay in creator's light like Shibu said. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow morning, bright and early, 6.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time.